Hi there and welcome to Walk the Word. It's good to have you with us again today as we are looking just to read God's Word and put it into action in our daily lives. And um, we're continuing our study in Mark today. So we're reading from Mark chapter 2, uh, verses 18 through to 28. And um, the passage as normal will be posted in the description box below this video. So you can click in there and read along or you can open your Bibles to Mark chapter 2 or your, your phones or whatever you read the word on. Um, but we want to start uh, by reading, reading together. So let's let's go for it. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment, otherwise the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for the priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. OK, so just two things I want to get into here. Actually, two clashes that Jesus has with the Pharisees. He will clash with the Pharisees a number of times through the Gospels. Um, he clashes with them over two things here, over this issue of fasting and over the issue of, of, of the Sabbath as well. And so we just want to get into both of those things. First of all, fasting. Um, basically, the question is, well, Jesus, why don't your disciples fast? Look, we fast. The Pharisees fast. John's disciples fast. Surely, you know, that's a holy thing to do. That's a good thing to do. Um, call yourself a man of God. What, why don't your disciples fast is basically what they're getting at. And Jesus's answer is uh, interesting, isn't it? He says, well, the bridegroom, ha no, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? And what Jesus is getting at there is, is look, they, they're, they're kind of using fasting as a way to get favour and draw God's attention to themselves. OK, that's what it had become. It become just another tick box exercise in in being a good religious Jew OK, or good religious Israelite. That to to, to kind of gain favour with God, you would adhere to the law and you would pray and you would fast. OK, and it's almost like that extra level of fasting, I pray and I fast, I'm that little bit more holy, you know, and it and it's almost like a status thing, a pious thing that that um, proves how holy you are and how much God must, God's favour must be on you and and I, and I can earn and draw God's favour. It it's, it's another works-based thing. That's what it fasting had become and Jesus is saying, look, it's a whole, there's a whole new way of relating to God coming about <laughs> that you don't, you, you, you know, you don't have to earn favour. You don't have to grasp or strive for favour through through fasting. Favour has come in in me coming is what he's saying. I'm the bridegroom. I'm here. And we know, don't we, as we move on in scriptures that that actually everyone who becomes a follower of Christ it, Paul says that 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 you're in Christ and you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. As we saw um, in the first session of this study, that we start from a place of favour because we're in Christ. Right. And so he's saying, look, the bridegroom is here. My followers don't need to fast. They don't need to strive for my favour. They already have it. I'm already with them. And that's what that's what he's getting at. He's saying there's a whole new way of relating to God uh, coming in Christ. And and so, you know, he hasn't come just to to kind of do up an old garment, you know, to to sew a patch of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment. He's not come just to patch up the old. 
And he's not come to just pour new wine into an old container. Yeah, he's saying something new is coming about here. The bridegroom is here. The favour of God is here. There's a whole new way of relating to God coming through Jesus Christ. That doesn't come through Old Testament law and just trying desperately and striving to keep the law and praying and fasting. It's going to come through faith in Jesus Christ. New wine is here and we've got to get rid of the old wineskin. And then there's the clash over um, the Sabbath. And basically, Jesus' disciples are just having a snack, aren't they? They're hungry and they're, they're, they're walking along with Jesus and they see some grain. And so they pick it and they eat it. And, um, and the Pharisees are, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's unlawful to do that. You see, the reality was Moses never actually said, oh, don't do that. You know, you can't pick green, uh, uh, green, you can't pick grain on the Sabbath and eat it. Moses never said that. That wasn't in. But they'd added all of these uh, kind of stipulations, if you like, to Sabbath regulation and made it quite a heavy thing. They'd made it a heavy thing. And the Sabbath was never supposed to be like that. The Sabbath was actually supposed to be about setting people free and people finding rest from their work. OK, and yet what? The Pharisees have done it, added all this law onto Sabbath keeping and it made it a heavy thing, a cumbersome thing, a burdensome thing rather than a freeing thing, a releasing thing. They'd, again, they, they, they'd taken what God had done and they twisted it and made it, made it a religious law keeping thing that it was never intended to be. And so the Sabbath had actually become a burden rather than a freeing thing and Jesus is basically just challenging that and he's saying look the Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath <laughs> i.e the Sabbath was supposed to serve us and and our well-being yeah it was for our well-being didn't mean you can't eat if you don't want to eat of, of course you can have a snack if you want to have a snack um not that not man for the Sabbath we you know man was not it wasn't supposed to be a law thing. Man was not supposed to, to kind of come under this heavy weight of the Sabbath. No, the Sabbath was supposed to lift up the man and free him and liberate him. And he says, you see, the son of man, that's himself, that's Jesus, is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he's saying, look, the true Sabbath rest is going to come through Jesus Christ. You are going to find true Sabbath rest in Jesus. He is going to become your rest, your peace. There's no need for striving. There's no need for law keeping. It's not about that anymore. There is this whole new way of relating to God that's coming. And it's through Jesus Christ because the bridegroom is here. OK, he's here. And um and so I want to encourage us and provoke us again. It's so easy, isn't it, to slip back into old ways of thinking, old, perhaps uh, adding in a little bit of law, a little bit of legalism. And Jesus just won't have any of it. He doesn't want the old wineskin. He doesn't want to burden us down with regulation. He wants us to come and find the freedom that he brings through faith in him, through grace. Yeah, we, we, we don't have to strive or work anymore. It's about faith in Jesus and, and knowing him and finding our rest in him. So I just want to encourage you today, you know, find your rest in Christ. Yeah, find, that's where your rest really is. Where, what are you looking to, to find rest and to find that kind of sa sense of Sabbath and well-being? It comes through Jesus Christ. And so just encourage you again, Read the passage again, turn it into prayer and make sure, yeah, you're not, legalism is not slipping into your life, but give thanks for the grace and the life that comes through Jesus Christ. Okay, have a good day.